Hello, welcome back to the next installment on our video, video series of UC9. Today we're going to look at video integration options. What options do you have available to you for video integration in a UC9 world? Why do you care about those options? And finally, how do those options work? So let's start, about, let's start with what options do you have available? Well, on the real basic, I've got point-to-point -point video calls, right? So if you've got a video endpoint, now I've got a video endpoint, you can dial me, we now have video. Pretty basic, right? So starting out with the basic, I can have a video endpoint on a PC, software, Mac, iPad, a personal unit like an EX60, EX90, all the way up to a room system. Room system can be an MX series or a C series codec designed to be static in a conference room. So when I've got two endpoints, what else can I do? Well, what if I want to do a third video endpoint, right? I can do that as well. So I can now have a conference between the three, and we'll get into how all that works. Other things I can do in a video world. I can manage these endpoints individually. In this world, I'm IP-based. So all of my management can be centralized to manage all the, the individual applications and endpoints whether it's a software programmer running on your PC or Mac, or it's an individual room system. So then we're going to look at going beyond conferencing. What options have I got there? Well, when we've got a conference call, we've got a point-to-point, -point, we're talking. I see your face, you see my face, we chat. Okay? I can pull in somebody else, we still have a real-time conference going. Well, what if I want to record that? I can do that. So if I want to record this conversation for later, and watch the video later, such as what you're watching right now. I have that as an option. On that recording, I can put trailers and bumpers. I can start the bumper out to uh, say, you know, this is what the video is going to be about, or I can brand it with a company brand. If you ever watch the Cisco videos, they usually end with a little Cisco trailer on it. I can also put watermarks on a video, maybe property of, or name of speaker, things along those lines. Once I've got that, I can now manage them. So managing that video content, once we've gone beyond video conferencing, turn it into content for view, viewing later, I've got some management options about with that. Make sense? So those are some of the options that we've got in the video world. So why do you care about this? Fair question. So video is the new voice. As communications grows, we're adding video on top of the voice that we currently use. Studies say that 60 to 70 percent of communications is related in body language. So that means a face-to-face -face meeting is pretty important. With video, I can have face-to-face -face meeting without having the travel expenses incurred in a face-to-face -face meeting. So it allows me to continue communication face-to-face, -face, read body language, but still cut down on that travel and on that time, actually, expense, monetary expense as well as time expense. So video has been around for a while. Right? Video has been, since 60s, 70s, we've been able to do some kind of video conferencing. But we haven't used it. It's just now starting to get used, and why is that? One of the things that I think about, when I was a boy, I used to watch the Jetsons. Have you ever seen the Jetsons TV show? George would talk to his wife on a video screen. And I remember saying, I'm going to be doing that one day. And the day really never came. We're there now. Why are we there now? Because it's easy to use. So video conferencing of the past, you had a big remote control. You had to understand all the buttons and what it did and how to use it. The back-end infrastructure was pretty complex. Nowadays, I dial you. If you've got video, I've got video, we've got a video call. I don't need to know anything else. With that ease of use, Adoption is following is falling in, in line with that. So I now have that ability to simply dial you and get a video call and not have to understand all the technical reasons behind the scenes that make it happen. Does that kind of make sense? Other reasons you care about that. It's easier to manage that back-end infrastructure now. We still have the back-end infrastructure. However, I don't need as detailed of a staff as I needed before. I don't have a lot of the ISDN lines and in, in the uh, complicated bridges that I had before. It's also easy to record and customize video content. So why do I care about that? Well, knowledge sharing and training. It's a lot easier now to record a video 
post it on an internal site, require your employees to watch it. I can also, on a running project, leave videos for each other explaining where we are or what's going on. So a lot easier to do with that. Also accountability. You know what's been said and by who. Okay. How many times have you gone out to YouTube to search for something? Right? We, we're using video nowadays for a lot of how-to. How do I do this or how does this work? Security, though, is a nice thing on your inside. YouTube is a great asset, but it's also public. What if you've got proprietary information? I don't necessarily want that on YouTube, but I can still get that same look and feel internally. One of the benefits in a Cisco UC world, though, on that uh, searching on YouTube, I can also search on words that are spoken in a video. So let's say that uh, there's a two-hour lecture and somewhere in there they say Cisco. I can search on the word Cisco as a keyword, it'll bring me to that spot in the video. So I've got much easier management of video content and it's much easier to search and find exactly what I'm looking for. Does that all make sense? So how does all this work? Okay, let's talk about that. So in a video world, I've got basic video, which I'll, I'll call basic video calling, right? I call you, you call me, we've got a video call. Pretty straightforward. So in that world, I've got some kind of LAN connection, I've got a video endpoint, I've got a call manager server. On this call manager server, my video endpoints are registered. This video endpoint dials this video endpoint. I now have a video call. Again, I don't need to know anything else. It's pretty straightforward. What if I want to conference in this video endpoint? So in a call manager world, I'll, I will use a voice gateway at 2900 to 3900, some kind of voice gateway router out there that has got DSPs on it. And I can conference using that, those DSPs. Very similar to the way I do audio, except I'm doing that as a video stream. So that's some basic calling video-wise from a call manager environment. What if I want to do some more advanced things, right? This implies that we're all registered to that call manager. What if you're not registered to that call manager? How do I get around that? Well, let's say you've got somebody out here on the internet you want to dial. Okay, they've got a video endpoint out here. I can add a VCS and Let's say this is my firewall, and in my DMZ, I've got a VCS Expressway. I can dial outside now by coming through this VCS, through the firewall of the VCSE, to this uh, video endpoint on the internet, and vice versa. He can dial me securely through the VCSE, through the VCS, to my call manager. So if, as I go outside of basic video dialing, I can add a couple of boxes in there. I've now got secure dialing to the outside world. Okay. Other things that we talked about from a conferencing world. We looked at the call manager using a DSP resource on a router. If I'm going to run a VCS, VCSE environment, I'm typically going to run that with some kind of MCU. That MCU is a bridge, multi-point control unit. His job, very similar to up here, is I'm going to mix different video streams. With an MCU, I've got the ability to go beyond uh, heterogeneous environments. In other words, I can take in different bit rates or different codecs. Uh, if you're 729 and somebody else is um, 1080p, I can mix and match those. Other things to think about in this world. I can add a TMS server. We talked about management, simple management. In a TMS world, all my video endpoints in my bridge, my MCU, can all register to this, T to this TMS. I've got one central place that I can manage all of my infrastructure from. Make sense? Okay. Let's look at other things that we can do. We talked about recording. In a Cisco world, that's a TCS server. TCS is a recording uh, appliance. What I can do with him is I can put him in this conference call. 
Now he's a member. He sees what you see. I can now record it. Now let's say I do a recording. What do you want to do with the recording? Well, let's say I want to add a trailer and a bumper and a watermark. How do I do that? So I can run that through an MXE. He can take that input stream out of the TCS once he's done, and I can do various things with him. I can transcode him. If we're recording this in a specific format, but you want to play it back in another format, how do I do that? I can do that through the MXE. I can make this available so you can play it back on a PC or a Mac or an iPad, depending on the format that it needs, whether I'm talking H.263 or if I'm talking QuickTime for Apple, things along those lines. In that transcoding process, I've also got the ability to put the trailer and the bumper and the watermark through the MXE. Another nice thing I can do with the MXE is called Pulse. Pulse is what will go through and parse the video looking for keywords and that's what we're going to tag on that video. So earlier when I said in a two hour video I'm looking for the word Cisco, it's actually Pulse, it's running on the MXE that's going to define that for me. So once he's done with it, how, where do I put it? How do I search on it? So far we're talking about gathering. Then I can add a show and share. Show and share is where I'll push that over to. So now I've got something like an internal YouTube where I can store all my videos, I can track who watches it, I can make it required to be watched so I can go back and find out if someone did watch it or not. The pulse analytics that we're talking about at MXE are now pushed to show and share. So from an end user's perspective, show and share is my portal. I've got an endpoint that I dial you by dialing your name or your number. I conference in recording if I want it, and I can have workflows set up and push it all the way out to show and share. So from an end user's perspective, it's kind of seamless in the back end. That kind of makes sense? Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.